Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here again with another tutorial for you. And in this case, we're going to be looking at very big modular builds. Now basically, I'm in the process of putting together a, a commission piece, yeah? Uh, the Greek Battle of Independence of 1822. Uh, it was the Greek battle against the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, now I hope I'm right on all that. Yeah, Jeff, if I'm wrong, I'm sure you'll correct me in the comments, mate. Uh, but, anyway... Yeah, this is what the project is. Now, there's quite a few sort of big hills in this project, okay? Uh, to give you an example, these are the size of the sort of scatter hills. <laughs> yeah, they're not small, are they? Yeah, but with regards to the actual battlefield, there was a big... In fact, let me show you... Oh, yeah, it's all right. It's fine. Don't worry. Calm down. Everything's fine. Hmm. Okay, but with regards to the actual battlefield, yeah, I'm going to throw a, a map up. Now, as you can see on the map, yeah, across the top was that big northern line, yeah, the northern ridge line, okay, and that's about five foot across on the actual table, so it can't be a single piece, so we're going for a modular piece, and what I thought was, I mean, I know I've shown you how to sort of build big hills and build hills and glue and all that sort of stuff, but we've never really talked about big projects and the little tips that make them a lot easier, so that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to be going through it, and lots of little tips and things on how to sort of bring these things together. Now the first thing you'll notice about Le Clatterer, yeah, it's obviously, it's two sorts of polystyrene on here, we've got the white polystyrene and we've got the pink polystyrene, yeah, expanded and extruded, but there's no reason why you can't. In this situation, yeah, I want quite distinctive hills and etching into the polystyrene on this case. Yeah, so that's why I've got the pink on the top, the ridge line. But the actual land, a lot of the photos, it's very rolling, it's very undulating, with what's a very dusty earth, yeah? And in that case, this stuff works better. One, it drops the cost down, it drops the weight of the piece down. Uh, so, you know, it's just better. And don't think that you can't combine materials, okay? Just remember that with pink polystyrene, you just need to cover it over with something. We've got to give this a texture. Whereas with, what you call it, with uh, extruded, uh, sorry, white polystyrene, we give a texture. Pink polystyrene, we actually, what you call it, we put texture into it. Anyway, let's get crack on, shall we? Right, let me put that down there without clatter. Now, obviously, we've got two big hills here, yeah? There's a two foot one there, and then a three foot one there, and they will go together like that. Okay, and there's various tips for putting these things together, and yeah, we'll move on to that now. Now obviously, as you're actually building and putting these together, you're going from plans to actually cutting your main materials. And one of the things that with these hills is it's very much a tiered effect. And so there's various different shapes to cut out different materials. For example, you know, the sloped hills are going to be bigger, hence it's jabai. You know, watch clear the pink ones, they're going to come up here because we've got sort of a slope, then a ridge. Okay, and when, when you're tracing these things out and sort of working from them, I often work initially from a base drawing on the actual base. Yeah, so I can actually look down on it if needs be, I can put models on it. You know, I can get an actual proper idea of measurements and how much room, is there a room for a predator there? You know, can I put 60 mil bases along this ridge line, etc. Yeah, now when it comes to transferring these plans up, you know, obviously you can freehand it. In these cases, it's pretty simple. Yeah, but what do you do if it's like this? And it's a more complicated ridge line. Okay. How do you transfer something like this, yeah, precisely or reasonably precisely over onto your over to your next material and as a guide onto your next material after that? Well, let me show you. Yeah? Move that up and let me just wiggle this round because it does need a little bit of room. These are big hills after all. Yeah, get a tape measure. Okay, and use the dot method. Okay? And the dot method is really simple. All you're gonna do get your pen, come to a point, whoa, okay. we're fine, I wish you would stop panicking, you know, you do stress me out, you lot, everything's fine, okay, you're going to use the dot method, yeah, and what you're going to do is basically, every time as you move along, it changes by an inch, you mark it, so, that's nine inches from that red line to the base, so I know at that sort of point, it's nine inches, so I come along, I put a dot. 
Yeah, and then move along, gonna keep going until it gets to about 10 inches. And then, yeah, it's about there. Move up, 10 inches. Yeah, and as you can see, it's as simple as that. Right, top's 11 there. Right, now we've got all the dots done, it's a simple matter of drawing the dots. Whee. So, as you see the shape, it follows the shape. So all I've got to do is go along like that, follow that dot, yeah, and then that comes down like that, it comes down to there, join to that dot, round there, back up there, oh, a little bit over, but that's because I'm talking. Yeah, that comes up there, round, back around there, yeah, there. This comes along here, yeah, it starts to slope upwards there, it comes round there, and then a sharp decrease to come off there. Okay, and there you have it. The moment of truth. Smooth that one out a bit, yeah. That's a bit paddier that side, but very rough. Yeah, looking good. And that's basically how you take plots from one to the other by going up. Okay, hope you find it helpful, guys. Let's move on. Now I'm faced with the same situation as before, transferring this design onto my extruded polystyrene. But I've got the benefit of this is polystyrene, not MDF. And I can use an easier technique, which is dead simple, and I'll do it very quickly here so you can see where it is. All I've got to do is come along, yeah, put holes straight through. And there we have it. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, but basically, yeah, there's my cutting line. Yeah. I'm going to crack on with this, guys. But, easy way of transferring one design to the next level. Okay, guys, let's move on. Now, I'm working through cutting out the uh, pink polystyrene. As you can see, I've cut one side out already. That's going to go there. But I need to cut the piece for this modular piece. And I've come across a little bit of a challenge. And it's a good chance to actually show you something. Now, here, yeah, we have the actual MDF. Yeah, with our diagram on and sloped bank. Yeah, or as someone on Facebook put it when I put a picture up. Yeah, he said slapped bank. And I immediately thought of uh, what's the guy out of uh, LLO? Uh, hello, hello, what you call it with Rene and what you call it, the French, what you call it, policeman. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about your slapped bank. My what? Your slapped bank. You mean my sloped bank? Yes, your slapped bank. Yeah, but anyway, there's my slapped bank. Okay. And then here's my what's up, sort of earth gradual slopes. Yeah, so this is going to be beveled. And as you can see, that fits perfectly. That's because this is two foot M MDF. This is two foot Jabai. But the wonderful people at Spaceboard who make pink polystyrene, yeah, make their sheets at 20 inches wide. Yeah, so I don't have a precise piece to put on there. So I'm going to, I've had to use a lengthways piece, which means I've got overhang. Now obviously this is going to be for a modular table, so these need cutting precisely. And you know, I haven't got you know, fancy tools to do this, so I need to get a little bit clever about how I do that. It's actually quite simple, yeah? Because that piece came from that piece, and we know that these are exactly the same, I can use this as a template. And what I can do is I can simply bring it up and literally place it on top, place it level, make sure they're all level, and then get a set square. Yeah, bring it up to there and just just a tad. They are a little bit filling, but perfectly lined up now, which means what I can do is I can drag this to the edge. 
yeah, get my hot wire cutter or even a sharp blade if you've got one long enough. Yeah, don't attempt to do this if your blade doesn't go from one ed one MDF to the other. You know, otherwise you'll get digging in, you won't be able to cut it straight. Yeah, but hot wire cutter, place it on, and it's just a simple matter of just a little pressure into the MDF to keep that wire against those edges. And there we are. Perfect. Yeah, a perfect edge now. And then what I'm going to do is very quickly, while they're all perfectly lined up, go to the other side. Yeah, and then what we have is a perfectly fitted piece of polystyrene. That's excellent. Yeah, easy as peasy. Right, next job is obviously I've got to start to bevel these off and start shaping them up. Yeah, so they'll start to actually replicate this sort of design. So, I'll come back to you once I've got this the basic shapes in and we'll talk further. Yeah, guys? See you. Look at that for a nice cut. Perfect meat. Right. I'm in the process of actually carving this up and starting to get the basic shape and this is very much like any other polystyrene hill. You know you hit it with your gross tools, at the minute I'm using a hot wire cutter but you can use steak knives, sharp blades etc. But I'm taking the bulk away with a hot wire cutter because it's a bit quicker, shaping it up with a, a sharp blade and then watch it all texture it with sandpaper and stones and all sorts of wonderful things. Now all that sort of stuff is exactly the same to any other hill and I've got previous tutorials on it in this playlist if you're going to have a nose. The interesting thing comes when with modular builds is where you meet. Yeah. Now obviously yeah, I want it to look like it's one continuous rock face. Yeah, And the way to do this is to make sure that when you do any of your cuts you do it with the pieces combined. Now obviously you could slip and all that sort of stuff, you could get your measurements wrong issues. So what I do is I put cocktail sticks into one side because remember no one's going to see this normally yeah and then that allows me just let me sit down so I can guide these in yeah that allows me to line it up and I can be sure that they're not going to slide backwards or forwards there's going to be no translation that way there's going to be no wiggling that way and I can keep these things in all the way up to what call it up to the just before painting where I'll pop them out, put a little bit of filler over them and then carry on painting and you'll, ne you'll never know they were there but in the meantime and all the way through the build like the gluing stages they can stay in to make sure I can get this perfectly flush. So with those in place, as a quick example, they are, perfect match. Okay guys, now I'm going to crack on and, and carve this up and the next stage will be sort of beveling and gluing down. And I'll sh just show you once I've got to there, the sort of end stage where I'm at, okay? See you tomorrow, guys. Right guys, it's been overnight and it's all dry now. And as you can see, yeah, the modular ridge is complete and it ties in. There's a little bit of sanding to do, but that's to be expected with all modular pieces. You know, just to get that last millimetre of joint together. Just let me line that up. But as you can see, yeah, they're looking good. Yeah, that's it. And next job is just to continue the details, but all that's like a normal hill, okay? Uh, I hope you don't mind this sort of tutorial, me sort of, you know, getting little tips out of bills as I'm doing stuff. If you prefer more formal tutorials or, you know, just let me know in the comments what you think and if, if you've in, enjoyed the information. In the meantime, I'm going to crack on with this and what I'll do is keep an eye on my Facebook page or I'll post a, a finished view when I've finished doing... That and the rest of the battlefield. Right, see you soon, guys. You have a good one, yeah? All the best. Ta-da.